Parscale said the fault lay with Twitter for allowing accounts to obscure their provenance. I wish Twitter would make that more obvious, he said. The message Parscale retweeted read, thousands of deplorables chanting to the media, tell the truth. RT if you are also done w slash biased media. Tweets from the at 10 underscore GOP account were also shared by counselor to the President Kellyanne Conway, former White House National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, and Donald Trump Jr., among others. The Internet Research Agency is a Russian organization that employs trolls who have been identified as a major part of the Kremlin's efforts to interfere with last year's election. Parscale is the first Trump campaign official to acknowledge his interactions with the account since the revelations about its Russian roots. When Isakov first asked him about his interaction with a 10 underscore GOP, Parscale said he did not know about its Russian origins. Parscale also defended the substance of the account's anti-media message. I was retweeting knowing that the media's biased, Parscale said. Parscale said he was not sorry about the incident, before backtracking slightly. I mean, I'm just I can't take back what I already tweeted. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate, said Parscale. Yes, I feel bad that it was a it was not a Tennessee account that I got fooled that it was a Tennessee GOP account. He added, millions of people retweet tweets. You don't have any idea who's behind that account. You know. I agree with the message. The media's biased. Did I have any idea who's behind it? No. If it would have been a Russian flag and IP up there, would I retweet it? No. Isakov pressed Parscale on whether being tricked by the account made him feel manipulated by the Russian government. Parscale was incredulous, remarking, Do I feel manipulated by Russia for retweeting one tweet? Twitter and other social media companies are facing increased scrutiny for hosting Russian accounts that post as American users and accepting political ads that originated in Russia. Isakov also asked Parscale about his own ad campaign for Trump. Parscale helped run a much vaunted plan that used Facebook to run a high volume of campaign ads that were targeted to highly specific audiences. He told Isakov that on a couple peak days during the election, Trump's campaign had over 150,000 different social media posts running as part of the effort. Some of the most successful ads, according to Parscale, touted Trump's promise to improve American infrastructure. He said the Trump team's social media analysis indicated this issue would resonate with voters. But Isakoff pointed out that, exactly a year after the election, there's been no infrastructure plan introduced by President Trump in Congress and no action on that whatsoever. So you told voters, vote for Donald Trump and he's going to repair your roads and bridges. And here we are, and he's done none of that. Did you con the voters that you were targeting? Isakov asked. No. He's got three years left to still fix infrastructure, Parscale replied. I think he has a lot of time still. He's trying to get working on tax reform right now. I think he's done a ton. I think he's done more than any president we've had in a long time, said Parscale. In July, Parscale accepted a request to testify in front of the House Intelligence Committee as part of its investigation into Russia's interference in last year's election. At the time, Parscale denied there was any collusion between the Kremlin and Trump's campaign. During his conversation with Isakov, Parscale said he supported the probes into Russia's role in the presidential race. Isakov noted this position is slightly different from Trump's. The president has repeatedly criticized the Russia probes, specifically the investigation headed by special counsel Robert Mueller. You'd have to ask him that, Parscale said of Trump. I don't speak for the president.